Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Why Aurelia. Today I am doing one of my most anticipated episodes of all time, really. Thank uh, you. I am joined by my good friend, Simon, the co-owner of the new Common Stove in beautiful downtown Aurelia. This has been, it's felt like this is a long time coming, Simon. It has been, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We're just delighted to be here and uh, have this open and be serving people steak. Absolutely, so I, I've had a pleasure uh, of coming here a few times already. I've had the yeah. pleasure of coming in with, with my family and- Been one of our most regular customers already, it's been fantastic. The food is, uh, you know, the, the service and the experience and the build up coming to this restaurant was, was second to none for me, but the, the nice thing is that the food has certainly delivered on that, that high hope. Um, sure so I wanted to give a chance because I know that you've got, to me, you've got a, a really special story of how you came to Aurelia uh, as a citizen of Aurelia, <laughs> uh, but also true, yeah. as a restaurateur and, and you know how it came to be that we are now sitting in the common stove. So I want to capture a little bit about that journey. So um, first of all, for those of, of you who haven't heard of the common stove in Aurelia, Simon, in your words, tell us what is the common stove? The common stove is a wood-fired grill. It's a space to put great meat, great veg, great fish, cooked over something which is the most elemental and natural uh, method of cooking, right. which is now just about coming back into vogue. There's a couple of places doing wood-fired grills in, in Toronto and in other kind of big cities, um, but hasn't otherwise been seen uh, in and around Aurelia. So yeah, we, uh, we light the fire every morning and we put on whatever's good, which today is a couple of good steaks and some carrots, parsnips, yeah. sweet potato. We're, like I said off camera before, we're exercising our, our discipline and restraint right now, <laughs> yeah, but exactly, not right. digging into this quite yet. But, um, you know, the, the wood fire grill, to me, the, the moment you walk in, you notice it in that nice smoky- It's just a little, little smell bit of, of that, uh, that ash and uh, maple, yeah. Um, and, and that transfers into the food and, and really gives sort of a nice, unique flavor. Let's get into the actual name of this restaurant. You know, we talked months ago, uh, yeah, maybe so. even a year ago, I, I don't know how long it's been, <laughs> it's uh, been a about while, the, the theory of, of the common stove and yeah. why it's called the common stove. And there's more to it than uh, just a name. Uh, so give us a little bit of context of where you came up with the name. So it comes from a design project in Slovenia where three villages, which were remote other than being close to themselves, uh, were based around a clearing. Now, Slovenia has, uh, rather like Ontario, a big history of forestry and lumber. Uh, about two thirds of the country is covered in woodlands. And these three villages in quite a poor area of Slovenia were centered around this clearing. And in the clearing was a stove uh, in much the same shape as our logo and, uh, and our ponquettes here. And people would come together and they would bring food to cook, they would bring loaves of bread, they would bring stews for the day, and they would cook for their family. And whilst they were cooking, they would chat and they'd catch up on the day's events and current affairs and that kind of thing. And then they would walk back with their hot stove, with their hot, um, their hot loaves, their stews, whatever it is, back to their families. And it was a daily ritual for them. Uh, and it just seemed like a really nice idea of people coming together over food and food and heat and warmth and conviviality being something which brought people together. Right. Uh, hey, I, I love it and you can certainly feel that, that vibe when you come into this restaurant. Now, speaking of the vibe, the I know this was something that was important to you in terms of defining what type of experience you're going to have when you come to yes, the common yes. stove. And, you know, I'll paraphrase and, and, and maybe let you get a little more in depth into your view for this restaurant, but, you know, not to be something that's so so fancy that it's unattainable, something that, that's special, though, yeah. uh, that, that's not your average meal that you maybe don't eat, ev you know, every week. True, yeah. Uh, we, we really wanted to try and divorce the idea of fanciness from just good service, hospitality, and great food. Right. We wanted to think that, you know, you didn't have to have uh, servers in three-piece suits and have tablecloths and feel like you have to really sit up right. and be really refined and things just to have a great experience in a restaurant. Exactly. Um, so yeah, we, we try and do a sort of casual professional hospitality where we think, hey, we've got people in this restaurant for two or three hours. You know, we are the curators of their time. Let's show them a fantastic experience. Right. Let's give them some fantastic food. Let's 
help them, if they're tourists to the area, they're new to the area, help them find their way around Aurelia and work out what they're doing next, what they're doing tomorrow. Let's guide them through the menu, which is maybe a little bit unusual to some people. Uh, guide them through the drinks list and make sure that we're, you know, helping them pick the things that they would prefer on there. Right. All done in a place where they feel comfortable and relaxed without thinking, <gasps> I'm in a formal fancy place. Right. Kind of fancy became a dirty word yes. for us as we were setting it up, you know. I, I it cannot that. be fancy. Exactly. And, and now, it, but it can be beautiful and it can be a great Absolutely. experience. It just doesn't have to be yeah. fancy. Now we're gonna to get to your drink menu in a second because I know it's a really interesting thing what you've done with the bar and, and the drink side of things. Uh, but tell us about the food here. Absolutely, well, as I say, if you can put it over wood fire, we have it on the menu. Uh, so one big thing for us is our steak selection. Uh, we don't like to think of ourselves as just a steakhouse. We've got a lot more to offer on the menu than that. Um, and we have a fairly small steak selection, but what we think is, if it's grass-fed, and if it's dry-aged, and if it's local, so if it's coming from Ontario, then we're onto a good thing. So all of our meat here is dry-aged, which means it sort of shrinks up over a couple of weeks, collects that flavor together, uh, and you get a sort of natural enzyme breakdown that brings a little bit more tenderness to the meat. We think it's, uh, all of our meat is grass-fed, the reason being that that's what cows should eat. Right. It tends to make more uh, flavorful meats. You get right. more beefy meat, I think. Yeah, it is, it is a really sort of rich flavor uh, yeah. on the meat. It's, it's not something that you get when you just go to the grocery store and, and buy a steak. No, true, true. Um, and then finally, it should be, it should be local. I, I'm not in the interest of shipping beef cuts over from Alberta or Nebraska or Argentina or Australia or something like that. Um, we have an amazing culture in Ontario of beef that is pasture raised right. and therefore we should be using grass fed beef. And one of the things I love about what, what you guys have done with your steak, and again you're not just a steakhouse but uh, you know I'm a steak lover myself and so, <laughs> so I come here for the amazing steak. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things that I've found with restaurants in the past is when you have this menu that every time you go it's the same thing. It's this pre-printed menu and really every, every restaurant that you would go to in this area, you open up the menu and you know, after you've come three or four times, you don't even need to look at the menu, but you guys do a unique thing with your steak where it's actually not on the menu. Yeah, absolutely. So we wanted to make sure that the menu, the first thing that people look at is not necessarily a steakhouse menu. It's a restaurant menu that has a number of exciting, interesting dishes on. But if they were to look up the boards here, then we've got a series of steaks. So. If you want a steakhouse experience, you can come here and have that. If you want a restaurant experience, you can come here and have that as well. So that it wasn't just one or the other. And the other thing is it's an element of practicality. You know, we buy a small quantity of meat to make sure that we're selling it all in that week. Right. So sometimes, you know, things get scrubbed off the board towards exactly. the end of the night and yeah. we have to urgently kind of call around and try and get it replaced for a, for a fresh delivery the following day. I like the, the element of surprise uh, where I don't know necessarily that I'm coming in to get you know, this exact steak that I get every time. There might be yeah. something on that chalkboard uh, that I haven't tried before or yeah, that's amazing. not necessarily my go-to, uh, but you know, maybe on, upon your recommendation, uh, I'll try that out. And so you know, I think that that's a really unique thing and, and certainly from a, a steak lover's perspective, appreciate yeah. it. Now, I wanted to talk about the Swinton's Bar. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Really cool story behind that. And, and I don't know that I've seen a restaurant locally, uh, or really a restaurant at, at all, that, that really has this bar element that 
it almost to a certain extent seems like it could be separated from the restaurant. Um, yeah, that was, that was kind of our hope that um, you'd have people using this restaurant in a number of different ways. So that yes, if you were coming in thinking, I want that date night experience, we're going to share a big porterhouse steak between the two of us and we're going to sit there for three hours and have loads of wine, that's, that's fantastic. But I also wanted people to come in for brunch on the weekends with their family and to feel comfortable and cozy doing that. Uh, we wanted businesses to come in and celebrate their latest closing. We wanted someone to come up at the bar and have just a little burger and a beer. We wanted people to come after their trip to the Opera House and have some charcuterie and cocktails. Right. Now, part of that was thinking, okay, well, let's have this kind of separate bar vibe. Uh, we were lucky enough, actually, as they were doing the renovations of the front of the building, they were able to take down the old sort of Swinton sign, which was hidden behind uh, the, the contemporary facade of the building, uh, which dated back to 1913, which was when this building opened as, uh, as Swinton's, a furniture store. So the sign that we see up there behind the bar now has been delicately restored and uh, repainted. We were sort of peeling away the paint and realizing there's, you know, <laughs> six or seven right. uh, repaints that's had at some point. So we didn't feel too bad about putting, uh, you know, a little of our own color on there to preserve right. it. Um, and it's amazing how many people in this city come up and they see, yeah, Swinton's, of course. Yeah, right. yeah my, my, my father used to work in that store. My, you know, I, we used to walk past. I remember that from a, being a kid. There's, there's an incredible sort of uh, personal history in Aurelia, which is really nice to celebrate. Absolutely. So there we have Swinton's Bar. Now, let's take a little bit of a different turn for just a minute here, uh, because this is a show about Aurelia, yeah. and I don't know if anyone's caught on yet, but it may be clear to some that you're not from Aurelia. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell that from the accent, is that I know, thing? I know. It's, it's not, uh, not clear to everybody, but uh, obviously you're not, you're not from Aurelia. So, in a nutshell, um, you know, sort of a bird's eye view, how did you, how did you land in Aurelia? <laughs> Good question, good question. My, my wife is, is from Aurelia. Uh, she was born here. Uh, we met in, in London, actually, in the UK. Uh, we both worked out there for, uh, for a couple of years before she convinced me that uh, Canada was a wonderful place to be. She uh, took me over here on, I think, four consecutive summers. This was a pretty smart move. Uh, and we lived in Toronto first. And every time, every few weekends, we'd keep coming up to Aurelia and Ah, oh, it was just, it was just fabulous. Just, uh, my, you know, my heart beat slower here. There was, uh, right. there was a, a better pace of life. There was uh, many more people that we knew and um, we loved walking around this city and uh, loved the character and its environment and its culture. And one thing that always stuck out to me was that I didn't think there was a place, there wasn't a restaurant there that I would want to work in or to, to, to run or to manage or something myself. So I thought, well, what a great opportunity. Let's, let's try and set up a restaurant for Aurelia. Right. Uh, so hence, hence the common stove uh, some year and a half later or so. Amazing. Uh, it's, it's great to see you here. Uh, you know, I first heard about you through mutual friends of ours and they said, you might be getting a call one day soon uh, <laughs> from Shannon and her husband, who's this very charming British man, and he wants to open oh. a restaurant. And, and that was the first, uh, first I ever heard of you. And, and so from that point to now, seeing this all come together has, has been a great experience for me. Great. Um, so before we, before we wrap up the interview, um, as you mentioned, this is a restaurant for a lot of different people, uh, yes. for a lot of different occasions. It's, it's a restaurant where you can come and just have a casual quick bite. It's where you can come for that birthday or anniversary special occasion yeah. dinner. Um, if somebody's watching this episode right now and they've maybe heard of the common stove, maybe they haven't, maybe they've thought about coming, they haven't quite pulled the trigger, what would you tell them? I would tell them that they should give it a try. This is, this is to me, the very best way of cooking. It's how we cooked millennia ago. Right. <laughs> It's how we cooked first as, as, as man, um, cooking over wood, cooking over a simple fire. Uh, it's how we first turned raw meat into a dish and into food that we, that we eat. And to me, there's this wonderful, subtle aroma around the restaurant of, uh, of a wood fire. There's a subtle flavor in, in the food as well that touches pretty much every dish on the menu. Um, that's to me makes all of the uh, all of the 
difficulty and the challenges behind having 18 square foot of fire in the middle right. of a <laughs> building made largely of wood um, <laughs> worth it? Yes. Because you get this sort of this pervading uh, uh, flavour throughout the whole experience. Um, so I would say, yeah, come down, true. check it out. Try the flavours, uh, try dishes that you may not have had before. Uh, and I hope the thing that is very familiar to you is the warmth and the richness of the hospitality because that's provided by um, our largely Aurelian native staff uh, who do such a fantastic job for us, uh, making everyone feel so warm and welcome. Absolutely, and, and at the risk of, of maybe sounding biased, you can think I'm biased or not, um, having eaten here a few times already, uh, we have our next two reservations already booked. <laughs> yes, I it, saw. It's certainly you. our go-to spot already, uh, and, and we've enjoyed every every dish that we've tried and, and every every moment we've been here and so uh, thank you for giving us that opportunity now and not at all the the name of the show the yeah. theme of the show the big bad question that i end every single episode off with for you now this can be professionally personally it, it can touch on, on a number of different aspects um but let me ask you simon why aurelia because there is something exciting happening in this city, right? I mean, if you take this block alone, just the, the Library Opera House block, there have been so many new, diverse, independent, exciting businesses come down here. People who are bringing residents to the downtown as well, which I think is much needed. Uh, and if you go down the street from here, out to the water, you see a number of new businesses starting out. You see a number of sort of new ideas, a lot of city-led planning, a lot of individuals taking the plunge with their own money and uh, yep. putting that into uh, putting that into downtown Aurelia. And there's a lot of exciting growth. I'm, I'm really excited to see where this city is in 10 years time. And Likewise. I hope the common stove um, is, a, is a big part of that. I'm sure it will be. So Simon, thank you so much hey, not for being a part always. of this community. Thank you for opening this great restaurant. Thank you for, for being such a, a great friend. and. Uh, I would encourage everybody in the Y Aurelia community, if you have not already come to the Common Stove, please do so. Do it. You probably won't regret it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true.